The evolution of man is a common image in pop culture, adorning t-shirts, posters, and the pages of many a biology textbook. It shows man emerging from his simian origins, through Homo erectus, Neanderthals et al, to modern man, Homo sapiens. But what would today's archetypal man, and more specifically young man, look like? How has he evolved socially since those early days of humankind? What would his values be, and how would he interact and form relationships with women in wider society? Since the early 20th century, women have engineered a revolution in terms of their social roles and perceptions of femininity. There has been, in contrast, relatively few changes in men to move away from the stultifying patriarchal ideals of the past, putting a spanner in the works. Jacob, why are you a feminist? <laughs> Do you hate yourself then? Do you think you'll get more girls if you're a feminist? Do you want to be a woman? <laughs> why on earth do you support something that's not in your interest? These are questions I am regularly asked by my male peers whenever my feminist views come up in conversation. What their questions reveal are not the hypo hypocrisies or problems of feminism, but rather damaging trends regarding, regarding young men's attitudes to relationships, sex, and society. Lab culture arose in the 90s as a rejection of feminism. It has gone from strength to strength since its inception, in an attempt to preserve traditional masculinity, which apparently involves getting lashed, bulging muscles, and leering at women. Excessive and regular alcohol consumption undermines health and educative outcomes. The academic results gender gap may be, in part, a result of young men being more fixated upon pumping iron, <coughs> killing terrorists on card, and getting gladder than staying and revising. Gym culture emphasises male beauty, strength, and sexual competition. Women and sex are a prize to be won through the procurement of a six-pack. Similar drug related attitudes towards sex and sexual partners are epitomised in the rating of women out of ten and production of tally charts of sexual conquests. Women are still expected to take the greatest responsibility for contraception and the unwelcome results of intercourse. Lab culture means seeking sexual gratification at the expense of the woman and her body. The abort of a gender has essentially shot itself in the foot in not furthering and widening the use of contraception. Purging the womb of an undesirable outcome of sex can be, in some circumstances, a further encroachment into women's bodies and lives by men. In a social environment in which unprotected sex offers higher status as a lad, I do not visualise the UK using, losing teen pregnancy capital of Europe status any time soon, or abortion rates falling. Until recently, the word troll meant to me an eventful evening in the girls' bathroom at Hogwarts at Halloween. <laughs> the word has been given fresh meaning by the social networking revolution. One who posts, tweets, etc. online to upset, threaten, or silence their targets. Trolling was originally viewed as a non-threatening, inevitable outcome of social media systems. But recent, recent news stories surrounding the Twitter abuse of Jane Austen Bankman campaigners have put anonymous and majority male perpetrators into the spotlight. One of the campaigners, Caroline Criado Perez, later questioned if she was forever doomed to be that rapey girl of Twitter. The trolls' attempts to silence her have largely succeeded. The causes she champions have been overshadowed by the, her emotional ordeal of rape and murder threats. Some defend trolling, that in free speech and free expression, but the violence and mercilessness of the practice suggest seen in the suicide of 14-year-old Hannah Smith in August, who fell victim to Ask FM trolls, suggests that it revolves around preventing free speech and destroying lives. Trolling is niche, but does reflect sentiments which are internalised in everyday life. Young men can't threaten rape or murder on the street, but can launch torrents of, of abuse online. We increasingly live on our computers and do not engage with others face to face. Trolling is bred from this disconnectedness from society. The internet and social networking revolution has enabled new ways of reinforcing regressive views of sexual and social identity. Many thousands of children and teens are regular users of pornography and are exposed to ex explicit sexual content on a daily basis. The majority of these users are, you've guessed it, male. Porn shapes these boys' sexual identities increasingly early, pandas to minority fantasies, and the behaviours exhibited are being normalised. Abhorrent behaviours are becoming more common due to porn's influence. The murder of Joanna Yates was linked to her killer's use of strangulation porn. Vincent Tabak was legally permitted to watch images. What effect do they have on impressionable children? The porn industry claims that its images and videos are not intended or manufactured for children, but it profits from them being drawn into addictive sexual and fantasies and practices at the expense of their sexual and mental health. I know of female peers being dumped for being frigid in comparison with the women seen online. 
sexual gratification is a click away, and so young men seek unrealistically regular and extreme sexual contact beyond the computer screen. Sex is just expected as a given, rather than as a product of a loving and committed relationship. This has a severe impact upon the rate of teen pregnancy, unprotected sex and abortion, and in extreme cases leads to the rape and assault of young women and girls. Exposure to porn is leading to the exploitation and violation of young women, as well as young men's sexual behaviours becoming more asocial and antisocial. The archetypal female bored body, the toned, hairless, almost, pre almost prepubescent barbie-shaped woman, sends the message that the adult woman, the natural woman, is repulsive. Women's self-worth, body image, as well as sexual behaviour, are in part dictated by images online. Serious change is needed to further revolutionise the relationship and interaction between the sexes. Unfettered sexual and social freedom of the male, protected by current trends, is encroaching upon the innate rights and value of the female. Far too often, we use the excuse, boys will be boys, in an environment of the exploitation and abuse of women. This means that women must bear the brunt of the sexual, social, domestic and political dominance of men as an inevitability. The trends I have described are, apparently, checking men's natural characteristics and, and roles. I don't think there is a universal characteristic applicable to all men, or that porn and trolling are natural behaviours. What I think are the most vital characteristics in any human are compassion and conviction. These are denied young men in it by society that suggests that empathy and sympathy are feminine, weak and detrimental behaviours. And yet the feminist and women's, women's liberation movements need women and men with these characteristics. Boys will be boys has to go. Thanks.